In this video, we're going to accomplish some maintenance on the John Deere X370 lawn tractor. What we're going to do is change the engine oil, change the air filter, change the fuel filter, and change the spark plugs. Everything you need to do this comes in this home maintenance kit from John Deere for the X300 series. This includes the oil filter, two quarts of oil, the paper element air filter, and then down in here, if I can get my hand down here, here's the foam ring for around the air filter. And then if we look down in there, we've got the fuel filter and two spark plugs. So everything we need to do this maintenance comes in this kit form. Now this maintenance kit costs just a skim under $60. It was like $58 and change in 2023. Now, depending on your usage of the machine, you may not actually have to change your air filter, the paper element and the surrounding ring every year. And you probably won't need to do your spark plugs every year. I know folks suggest it, but to be honest, this is the first time that the spark plugs in this X370 are gonna be changed to my knowledge. And this machine was made in 2017. It's now 2023. And there are almost 260 hours on this machine, 258 and change. So spark plugs, something that you can potentially get away with not doing every single year. Air filter, gonna be dependent upon the operating conditions you're working in, how dusty it is and all of that. In this case, I put enough hours on this since the last time I changed the air filter that I believe it's definitely worth doing, which is why I purchased the whole kit. Otherwise, you can buy some of the individual parts like the oil filter or the fuel filter, and you can definitely save some money over purchasing the entire kit. Now, before I start working on this machine, it's a little filthy. So step one is gonna be some cleanup. This has been running all year without any major cleanup here underneath the hood. So I think what I'm gonna do is go get the compressor going, get some compressed air going, get, get a rag, and we'll start just cleaning up the outside of the engine here before I get into doing anything else. To make for easier access, I will go ahead and remove the hood. So we'll start with that. To remove the hood, you first want to disconnect the wire here up to the headlights. So that connector right there. And then once you do that, you can kind of work the hood and if you get it into the right position, you can lift it off the pins. There's one on this side and one on the other side. So that just pops right apart, right there. And if I come around the hood, I'm gonna kind of create a little underneath if I can there it is. So I tilt it back and then it releases and it just lifts away just like that. Now that the worst of the grime is cleaned off the machine, I'm going to go ahead, start it up, let it run for a little bit, warm everything up, get that engine nice and warm so that I can change the engine oil. ready to get underway here on the uh, maintenance itself first thing I'm gonna do is actually pull the battery out now I would need to disconnect it just for safety and doing the oil filter and the spark plugs and all that stuff anyway but to even get to the fuel filter which is right down there I basically need to pull this battery anyway just for the access makes it a little easier to disconnect, it's uh, 10 millimeter, so both sides of this, 10 millimeter. So I've got a socket and then an open-ended wrench here. And I just start with the negative and then go to the positive, and then when I put it back in, it's reverse the order. So we'll pull that cable right out of the way, and then we'll go ahead and do the other one. Now, personally, I'm a little indifferent to how this battery is held in here. All this is is a rubber, essentially a bungee cord, and I need two hands to do it, so I can't be holding the camera for it. But essentially, you just undo this bungee, and this is what's holding the 
battery in on that platform and that's really it there's nothing holding it down from above so kind of an inexpensive way to do this it works but you almost expect more from a machine that costs over four thousand dollars now for the oil everything's on the left side of the engine from the perspective of the operator seat so there's our oil fill our oil filter and this here is our oil drain. This is an easy drain, so you don't need any tools to do this. You can do this with your hands. So the first step is to open that. To do this, I have my front wheels turned hard to the right so that I can jam my waste oil container in here. This is just a gallon or five quart oil jug that's empty. And then I've got a funnel right in the top to receive the waste oil that comes out of the engine. This engine holds about two quarts. So as long as you've got a half gallon of capacity in your container that you're capturing the oil in, you're all set. All right, so all we have to do is open this cap. You just twist it by hand. The plug will come out and then the oil will start to drain. You'll notice it's not going very quickly, but I'll go ahead and open the fill and then it will start to really flow there. While that oil is draining, we'll make good use of time and go ahead and change out the air filter. So these top clasps turn a quarter of a turn and then you can lift this cover away. And so inside here, We've got the filter, and this is a hand screw to loosen the hose clamp in order to disconnect that. But I'm just going to wipe this up a little bit before I go ahead and undo that. Now that I've got some of the dust off, I'm just going to loosen this here. With that hose clamp, and then if I kind of pull this out, wriggle my hand back there, I can just kind of twist and pull this air filter out. So here's the old one. You can see all the uh, crud that was packed in here. This outer screen can actually be cleaned, but if I pull this outer screen off of here, I don't know how well this shows up on the camera, but it's rather dirty. You can kind of see it's gray. I'll grab the new one here just so you can see the difference. All right, so this one is the new one versus this one. So you can see all of the dirt that's packed in there. So what I gotta do now is just put the new foam ring around this new air filter, and then it's ready to go back into the engine. So here's our new filter up on the bench here. We just need to stretch this pre-cleaner around it. These do tend to collect some debris down in here in the bottom of this air filter chamber. What I want to do is just cover up this inlet hose into the intake and then I'm just going to kind of brush that out with my my fingers and a rag. I'm not going to blow it out because I don't want this any of this to fly down into the engine. So we'll go ahead and slip this new filter in here. So it's kind of the reverse of taking it out. I just kind of tuck that in. Then we get this clamp screw here. I'm gonna tighten that back up. Just like that. And we'll get our cover back on here. Get those screws in. Turn, turn, and that's that. Coming back over to the oil, once it's drained out, we can go ahead and hand screw this plug back in here. And then we're ready to go ahead and do the oil filter. Now before I go ahead and loosen this, I just wanna show you, this being on the side of the engine, it's inevitable that it's kind of a little messy. There's a small lip here that comes out of the block which is designed to kind of catch and deflect oil away from running down the side of the block. But nonetheless, when you unscrew this and this gasket comes loose, oil is going to be draining out from the back edge here. So you want to have something to be able to capture that, 
so you don't end up with a mess on your hands. So right now I have loosened the oil filter such that it is just hand tight so that I can unthread it by hand. What I have here is the dripping tray or the grease dripping tray from my Weber gas grill. This is just the right size to slip in underneath that little lip there so that as this filter gets loosened, the oil that spills will be captured here, or at least most of it should be captured here, instead of dripping down onto the floor. So this is really a groove way to do this. This one has a square edge compared to a round pie tin, and that square edge kind of fits up against the side of that engine block. So I highly recommend doing this to prevent mess if you're changing your own oil on one of these. It would be nice if John Deere came up with some little chute or scoop or something that just directed any dripping oil right out the side so you could put a pan under it and catch it. But in lieu of that, this is effective. So, like I said, it had it hand tight. So as we loosen this, there comes the oil. Now there's not a ton in this, right? This whole filter is maybe a cup in size. So we kind of drip that out and then if I hold this like this, I can get this over to my funnel and my waste jug, let that drain. And then you do got to hold this up, make sure that you don't spill any out the side. But if we kind of keep this here while well, that continues to drip just a little bit, and then I'll pull this out of the way, grab a rag and then kind of wipe up the remaining drips that are on that little lip there. Get this thing cleaned up and ready for the new filter. So let's slip that on out. Grab this rag from down here. Now I'm just gonna leave that there while I get that next filter set up. With a brand new filter, what I like to do is actually pre-fill it with oil and let it soak in. So I'm gonna take this and I'm gonna pour oil right down the center until it comes right up the top. We'll let that soak in and then the little bit of oil that's here, I'm just gonna take and oil up the gasket. so that that'll make a nice seal to the side of that engine block. Now, this filter being filled with oil at the bench is gonna drip just a bit, but if I go ahead and get that screwed on there, with these, you just wanna go nice and snug, hand tight. You do not wanna use a filter wrench or anything on this, putting it on, because it will make it very difficult to get it back off again later. So I just use my hands, kind of work in there, and get it nice and snug on that gasket. Refilling with oil, I do the first quart and a half or so pretty quickly, and then I start to check with the dipstick just to make sure that I'm not gonna overfill it. So right now I've got one and three quarter quarts in here. I should note for checking the oil, you don't screw the dipstick in. You're supposed to rest it on top of the threads. What I usually do is spin it counterclockwise, which is the loosened direction until it drops down. So you see that? You go backwards, it, it raises up, 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 up. And then there's a point where it falls back down. I usually check it right there. Nothing says that that's what you should do. That's just what I like to do. But anyway, right now it's full on the dipstick. However, once I do run the engine, it's gonna fill that oil filter the rest of the way and it'll need a little bit more. Next we have spark plugs. This engine is a V-twin. So we've got one here on this side and one right here on the other side. I will show you just doing one of these out kind of slow form and they're essentially both the same. So we just need to remove the boot, disconnect the spark plug wire, get our spark plug wrench down in there and then carefully loosen the spark plug and then install a new one. 
For anyone not familiar, this is a spark plug socket. This one's 13 16 which fits on the spark plugs in there. It is just a deep socket, but it's got a rubber insert in there that will cradle the spark plug, keep it centered. And the idea there is just to protect that ceramic part of the, the spark plug and support it so that you can easily insert a spark plug straight into the cylinder head because you do not want to cross thread one of these. You can strip your head and that of course is a major repair. So we're going to work on the right side of the machine from the perspective of the operator first. I'm going to wiggle this in and right there now it's on that plug. I'm going to take my ratchet, get on here, and then there it is. That's now loose. Normally, I just remove the ratchet as soon as it gets loose. And then I just by hand unthread the plug. You can see it's got nice long threads on it. So that's it. Pulling these out can sometimes be a little bit tricky just because it's in that rubber jacket, but that's good. It's nice and sealed in there. So there's our plug. And just for reference, how often do you really need to change your plugs? Well, this plug has 258 hours on it. And I don't think it's ever been pulled or cleaned. So is this perfect? No. But let me tell you, I have seen much, much worse. Here's the brand new plug next to it for comparison. Now, to put the new plug in, what I like to do is actually put it into my spark plug socket like this. And then I very carefully go in here, just by fingers, I want to line that up very carefully and just spin that in by hand until such time as I can. And then I'll do that final torque with my ratchet. I'll put my ratchet in. And just carefully snug it up. I don't want to overdo it. There we go. Now we're getting to resistance. All right, that should be good. Go ahead and put this wire back on. We do the exact same thing now for the other plug. Now it's time for the hardest part that fuel filter. You don't have a lot of space in here to work. You have to get those clamps moved back and then you've got to get the barbs on the both sides of that fuel filter out from the lines. So this is the engine side. This is the fuel tank side. So inlet, outlet. You do need to pay attention to that when you put the new one in. And uh, I kind of give these a little squeeze and twist to work them out and it's not necessarily easy. I'm just kind of twisting back and forth to get those barbs out of that line and I'm about there. There we go. All right, so that's one side. There it goes. It's coming. All right, there it is. All right, so that one's out. Here's our new one. Right there by my thumb, there's an arrow pointing this direction. So that's the direction of fuel flow. So we put this end into the line from the fuel tank. And then we take the other end and put that into the line to the engine. These push in nice and easy, but taking them out is a different story because of those barbs. Grab our clamps, 
slide that one back up. I'm not left-handed. I'm trying to do this with my left hand. There we go. Okay. Both of those are in place. That fuel filter is ready to go. At this point, the battery goes back in, the hood goes back on, and this is a finished project. We got it started right up. I checked for leaks around that oil filter and the drain plug. Everything looks good, running smooth. I shut it down, checked the oil, topped it up to the full line, and so now it's ready to go. We just park it back in the barn and we're set for the winter. Since this machine is going to now sit for almost five months, I will actually pull the battery out and put that in my basement. That way the battery is not subjected to the freezing cold temperatures of winter and it's easier for me to maintain it. Hopefully you found this video helpful in terms of doing routine maintenance on the John Deere X300 series lawn tractors and I think the X500 is pretty similar as long as it's got the gasoline engines. They're all Kawasaki engines. I got this maintenance kit from the John Deere dealer. You don't have to do that. You can pick up the parts for Kawasaki engines elsewhere. The maintenance kit was convenient for me this go around since I was actually doing everything. Otherwise, on an annual basis, it's really just your oil, oil filter and fuel filter that are really important to change out. Air filter, change it out if it is dirty. If it doesn't look too bad, sometimes you can just get away with cleaning that outer uh, filter element, that kind of foam ring around the paper element. Clean that off with soap and water and sometimes you're good to go. But if you've been out in a lot of dust and there was debris in it like I had in mine, just go ahead and swap out that air filter too.